Well, gender responsive budgeting is uh, not a new initiative. It's an initiative that has been around for uh, over 30 years. And it is an initiative that actually brings together two fields that are not commonly associated with one another, which is gender equality and uh, public finance. Uh, it is an initiative or a strategy that strives uh, to advocate for um, good and deep analysis of the budget funds and towards uh, well-targeted budget funds to the real needs of the society, being men and women, boys and girls, and uh, different social groups. By including gender equality in microeconomic analysis and by including gender equality in the budget planning processes and the public finance reform we are adding uh, an important dimension of uh, being able to assess the real needs of the society. What we are trying to do is to uh, mainstream gender equality in all the budget programs so that we actually do the analysis of um, each of the programs, for example, in agriculture, in health, and to see what is the real impact of the program. Did the funds reach all the social groups? Did they reach women and men? And did they manage to close the gender gap? Most of the countries globally are going through the major budget shift, the major public finance reforms. These reforms are leading towards more result-oriented budgeting, more transparent, more accountable budget systems. And if we include gender equality in these reforms, then we are really making, uh, we are really achieving these results. We are really making more transparent, more needs oriented, uh, more accountable budget process. I think, first of all, it is very important to demystify uh, gender responsive budgeting as a concept. And uh, just as it is important to demystify the budget process to the citizens, it is equally important to um, bring gender budgeting closer to the decision makers at the Ministry of Finance, at the political level, at the parliaments, because ultimately they are making decisions about the budget. So to kind of... Um, I, I use this word often, but really to demystify uh, um, all the steps in gender budgeting. So, what does it really mean? How do we how we how do we work with the budget? What are the main gender equality challenges in the country, and how to bring them together? One of the uh, main objectives of uh, the PFM reforms currently is the, to achieve operational efficiency and effectiveness of managing of public funds. Now. We can do this only if we really target the funds to the real needs and real priorities of the society, which we can see and define also by doing very good gender analysis of the budget programs and the budget projects. It's also very important to highlight that um, the biggest focus or one of the major focuses of the um, result-based budgeting and performance-based budgeting is to have uh, good performance indicators. And gen adding gender indicators in this uh, matrix, I would say, is significantly improving the um, overall system of measuring the results of the programs. Because in the end, we also want to have gender budgeting institutionalize it, institutionalized within the budget documents and the budget process. So we do want um, uh, we do want that the Ministry of Finance takes up the task and not the uh, the institutions that are outside of the budgeting system. At the moment, we are, are doing the gender analysis of the budget programs. Uh, actually, the project started by doing a gender analysis of the budget programs in uh, Lugansk and Ivano-Frankivsk, which are the oblasts in um, Ukraine. And uh, we did the analysis of the, well, I will tell you about the analysis in sports, um, in the field of sports in Lugansk, which actually showed that uh, when we started the analysis, we understood that there is 85%, uh, again, around 83% of men that are using that are budget users that are using this uh, funds for sports in different kind of um, sports facilities, sports clubs, and so on. Uh, when we did this analysis, we also recognized that most of the trainers are men, and then we also did the analysis of media, which showed that even no, there is that there was another step to it uh, that women who were getting that even though uh, men uh, were basically uh, using the funds and attending all the sports clubs. Uh, women were getting more medals when they compete. But then we also did the analysis in the media which showed that uh, even when women do get medals, women are still reported more about their results. Now, 
as a result of this uh, of this very simple gender analysis that we did, uh, we gave several recommendations how to increase the number of women in sports. The first step was, of course, to do the, the to, to do the focus groups and to see why there are not more girls that are engaged in sports, but also to increase funding uh, towards women clubs to also uh, meaningfully engage more women trainers. And, of course, to uh, have a different kind of session with media about reporting of women uh, women sports persons. Now, the results can be already seen because we can say that already we have more uh, higher percentage of girls that are engaged in the sport activities. So this is just a very simple example of what we can do by, the, by gender budgeting or gender analysis. I think another example it is... Uh, here in Ukraine, we have um, a big issue with um, very low life expectancy for men. It is one of the lowest in Europe. It is um, uh, the men are expected to live uh, for 65 years, which is uh, which is very obviously very low, and it is a gender issue because uh, it is related to all the social implications of what it means to be a man. Of course, the abuse of alcohol, cigarettes, stress, and so on. So through the gender budgeting, we are now trying to look into the health programs and to have uh, this issue reflected through the uh, measures, how to say, prophylactic measures, to measures to kind of, uh, to try to increase the, the, the all the measures that are related with the uh, uh, health issues specifically related to men. Uh, the number of men who are graduating for, from university is also reducing globally, and uh, if one does not have the gender equality again lenses, we would not know that because the overall number of um, university graduates is increasing. There are three most important steps that we can follow and that are not uh, directly um, given in kind of order of hierarchy or, or sequence, I would say. Uh, first of all, uh, it's very important to do the uh, gender budget analysis of the budget programs or projects, and I already talked about it, which means that we uh, assess the impact of the programs to the society and different social groups and men and women. And the second step is then to make changes into the programs based on the result of these findings, which will make them more gender responsive ultimately. And the third very important step is to uh, institutionalize uh, the gender budgeting and, as we already said, to uh, uh, basically have the gender equality requirements in the budget laws, in the budget documents and in the budget process itself. And while uh, this is important goal, it's not the goal in itself, it's not the end of the process. It means, as I said, a lot of trainings, a lot of capacity building so that the process can start again with the gender analysis, with the adoption of the programs and the change of the programs, uh, and, and so that it, it can continue. And in the countries that I have been working uh, with, that are um, countries in transition, it's also very difficult to do any kind of monitoring of programs, exactly because of the lack of data, the lack of structure, the lack of communication between the statistical institutions and the ministries themselves. This is definitely a challenge. And then, of course, it is the challenge that the gender equality very often falls off the agenda immediately when there is any kind of crisis, and all sorts of crises are happening at the moment. What I'm trying to say is there are many ways in which we can have the gender equality integrated in the budget process and also many ways in which we can present it. So I think this is also very important to know that there is no one fit all recipe or